being as as high up as you could possibly go in one of these twisted ministries I've seen what I've seen and I've been where I've been and now there has to be people that can educate and talk about it and people want to know because okay. then that makes my generation not want to know the Holy Spirit okay. because he's moving in the places that are so perverted. We need to teach the truth in every area, whether it's a one-on-one -on -one conversation, whether it's behind a pulpit, whether it's in a evangelistics or anything, mm -hmm. but we have to do it and not be bitter about it. You have experienced the challenges yourself. You've experienced them through your friends. What's the solution you'd like to see? Welcome back to the Friend of God podcast. I'm here with my dad, Joe Mano. Um, whatever it was on the previous podcast that I planned on talking about got completely derailed and distracted because we just went full Bible study mode, which is good. I feel like that's healthy to see. Amen. But basically why I brought him here is you were preaching today. And I said, just drive to my house because we always talk about this when I feel like I have things from the Lord or I feel like the Lord is showing me things. I always process it with him. And I was like, I feel like it might be healthy, especially as a father daughter and kind of even as like an intro of what I feel like I'm supposed to be doing with the podcast just to kind of process it here with you. And if we have to edit something out, we can edit it out. But I would rather it just be like really raw, authentic wisdom from you and then kind of expressing what I feel going forward. Okay, well then, Lord, let be your will be done. Let it be your, your decisions and let it not be of the flesh, but of your perfect will to grow your kingdom in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay, so last night, me and John watched the movie Sound of Freedom. Oh, yeah. Have you seen it? Mm -hmm. It like <clears throat> wrecked me. Yeah. I didn't get the chance to watch it because until last night. And most people, when I ask if they had watched it, their answer is, I don't know if I want to watch it because I don't know if, you know, I, I don't know. I don't want to feel like I have to do something or it's almost like they know that it's going to be really weighty and they don't know if they want to take that. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I want that feeling like, let's yeah. go. And do you ever feel like whenever you hear someone operating in their anointing, whether it's like worship or a message or you watch a movie that you really feel like is pointed in the lord that it does something in you whether it's in the movie or completely separate or in the song or completely separate it kind of gets you stirring yeah like do you ever sit and watch someone preach a message at church like pastor rodney like you sit there and while he's preaching you automatically start thinking of an own like personal sermon mm -hmm. that has nothing to do with what he's talking right, about right, right. you're just inspired by right. the lord moving and you're like oh my gosh i do that all the time while you preach i take notes because it's really good but right. sometimes i'm like <laughs> because i i feel like nobody ever talks about that of right. like when you feel like the lord is moving in someone else or you feel like even in worship i feel like mm -hmm. i'll get some of them like most deep words from the Lord or messages right. or something. So to kind of sum up the movie, the guy kind of works to like break down pedophiles and he saves people from abuse. And one of the things which I thought was crazy is that most people said in the movie, which people even say now is like, there's too many to save. Like there's too many children, yeah. there's too many abuse victims to save. And it was like wild, beautiful because he worked in that field. He was in that field. And then the Lord opened up a door. He believed mm -hmm. in the Lord. The Lord opened up a door for him to save all these children from this abuse of. Well, know. his boss said, you have, you have brought down a lot of pedophiles, mm -hmm. but how many kids did you save? I think that was his coworker that said that. Well, it was, it was, it was the guy that was over him. Oh, okay. Yeah. And he said, I mean, I don't know how true the movie was to that detail, but yeah. it was, it was a guy. And he, he was saying none he hasn't saved any kids yet and that's yeah. what kind of got his thought going from what i understand yeah so we watch it and like most christians me and john go to bed last night being like oh my gosh lord like what what do we do how can we you know like well, i'm gonna save all the children but of course what's beautiful about that is yes we want to be able to save and support and do things in those realms but the lord can actually when you watch someone going after what they're supposed to do in the lord it, it shifts something in you when you're supposed to go yeah. after something in the lord so today in the car, I'm driving and I'm praying and I'm like, Lord, um, like, how do I save these children? Like, I can't get over it. I'm just like feeling all the things I'm like, how do I save these children from abuse? And I was like, God, I would save these abuse victims if I was in his same scenario. If you like, if I was teed up and I knew all the people I would go after it, like, let me be a martyr. Let me, Adam, like, let's go for it. And I said, if if I was in the right realm and saw what he saw and had the accessibility, I would save people from abuse. 
and I felt like the Lord it like came in the car, like the presence of the Lord. And I felt him say, you did, you were a part of abuse. And I did ask you to speak out about it. And I was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> so I called John. I talked to mom about it too. And I was like, because to kind of like sum up, I feel like I've seen a lot of stuff in church. I've seen a lot of abuse. And obviously I'm not comparing abuse in church to childhood trafficking at all, but it is a form of abuse. And it hit me because it's not at all where my mind was. And I was like, God, I would go to the ends of the earth to do what that guy did and to save these kids. And I felt like the Lord was like, like that Esther moment on... What I told John today is I was like, imagine if Esther saw everything she saw and grew up where she grew up and she was meant to speak up and out for a people. And she said, I'm going to dedicate my life to prayer and fasting. You'd be like, that's great, Esther, but that's not why you're created. Well, she put her life in danger. Right. And so I looked at it because I have seen so much, so many things, and my friends have just what people have experienced and all of that um, has, I've seen and been exposed to like mass church abuse and spiritual manipulation the whole thing and I was like lord like I don't want to talk about it I'm done I don't, you know right. we closed the chapter on that right. and then I was in the car and he was like I, I you have seen you were in a position where you saw this stuff and I did ask you to talk about it okay first of all there's a way to do it in other words you're either going to uh, come at it at an angle to rescue the people right or to attack the person exactly and that's the thing where i'm like i don't i it has nothing to do with a ministry or a man it has things to do with a a culture and the way people are being treated across the board mm -hmm. like what if in that movie what if someone in new york was doing this and everyone's like let's take down new york and they're like that's great but every other state and every other country has this issue too yeah it has nothing to do with one man not one person's that powerful right. Did I experience it through one avenue? Sure, but then it's happening all over, and obviously stuff is coming okay. out Okay, we talked about this on the last one. So many people, especially, especially, and I want to say, when I say young people, because I was there mm -hmm. at one point. Because you worked for ministry. I worked for a ministry, yes. So it's people are after the desire of the flesh, mm -hmm. not the desire of the heart. And they disguise that by saying, I'm doing it for the Lord. Right. It's not for the Lord. You want to vindicate yourself. Yes, you want to vindicate yourself. Right. The desire, you, you don't need anybody right. to worship God, to desire God. And if you are where your friends are and you're where the sparkle is or you're where the, 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 the place that strokes the flesh the most mm -hmm. is where you will talk yourself into saying, it's God. Right. Well, tell that to Paul. Right. Because God allowed him to be in prison. Right. But he wrote epistles in prison. You know, that's not pleasing. Mm -hmm. But he didn't, his grace is sufficient. Right. So, so God, he, what you're saying is God didn't put me there, but God let me see. God did not put you there. Mm -hmm. But God but can use when you. But when you were put there by the evil of the world, mm -hmm. you have a choice to blame the people that put you there right. or find Jesus there and heal yourself right there. I think because I love people so much, not like, a, oh, I love people so much, but because I feel like I've grown such a love for them. I was just telling mom, I even had a, a dream where I was like hanging out with them. Like it was like old times that I have such a love for these people that I don't want to talk about it because I see their humanity mm -hmm. and that they're parents and they have family mm -hmm. that I don't, I'm like, what benefit? But then I have friends who are walking away from Jesus because mm -hmm. they think this is how God is. They think when they leave these churches and they say, you know, they're being um, excommunicated and they're being told that, you know, they're never going to have an anointing again or... See, this is just, this is all, this is all stuff that is brought by uneducated theology. Right. That's not, that's but, not who but God But they're is. young. And so this is what I wanted to say is that I told the mom on the phone is that when I left this place, I was so confused and so overwhelmed because of what was told me and like the mass majority of what I was hearing is I said, Lord, I need a father in the faith to tell me that it's okay to leave because I felt like I was going to dishonor. Dom got told her kids were going to die if she left oh, and that her man. bones were going to rot if she left. So, I, you know, isn't, go ahead. So I asked the Lord, give me a father in the faith. Then I go to Target. 
I run into you and you're at Target and you're like, hey kid, which we weren't talking that much there because all the reasons. And you're like, hey, what's going on? I was like, oh my gosh, I asked for a father in the faith and the Lord brought Mm -hmm. me my actual father. Mm -hmm. So last night I was talking to John and one of the things we always say when we talk about spiritual abuse is I'm like, where are the fathers to talk about this? Why isn't anyone teaching? Because I, I'm 28, I'm not like a spring chicken, but I, <clears throat> I didn't know you tried to tell me, you know, because you've been through it. But there are these people who are in their 18, 19, 20s, whatever, even people in their 50s, 60s are saying this, and they're like, where are the people talking about it? But every, everyone is on the side where they like, oh, we, we just don't want it to get messy. And this is one of the things that I've learned is that people will say, I, I don't want to make the church look bad or make the church look messy and it's like well good morning the church looks really messy and now it's up to the fathers to address the church is messy the church is us right and we're a mess but if the world already knows what's going on in the church Mm -hmm. is crazy but not all churches are like this and not all pastors are like this you're not like this we're all human i'm i'm not like that but i do recall moments of me being like I could have been like that because I didn't know any better but then you come out of it you first started the church that you had a lot of learning curves that there was like pride that you had to deal with as Mm -hmm. most of us do things where you it's easy to operate by the game it's easy to be pressured by the desire of the people but I feel like you're pretty honest about yeah yeah I mean it took a while to get out too what has to what has to decrease is as it says in John 3.30, John the Baptist says, I must become less, he must become more. Mm-hmm. We must become less in criticizing the ministry of ministers mm-hmm. and be more, more, I guess, uh, profitable on using, is ministering Jesus to the people, mm-hmm. starting with ourself. Mm-hmm. So people that have hurt you, hurt others, that's God's top job to judge them. You should consider that pure joy right. that you've gone through this trial and tribulation to come out of it and help others not to fall prey in it, but you're only to warn. You can't right. make. So there's so much perversion and twisting and just nasty stuff that goes on behind the scenes that I'm happy that I escaped it, but nobody's talking about it. And what I've seen people doing it wrong is they get too honed up on the ministry that hurt them rather than what is right and wrong in church at large. Mm -hmm. We are not talking about the things that are unhealthy in church because the older generation thought if we did that we would make the unbelievers not want to come to church. But instead, these things are widespread and it's hurting the believers. The believers are getting manipulated and twisted and hurt. And actually the unbelievers are like, can someone call truth to it? Can someone actually say what's going on and tell us who Jesus actually is? Or okay. is this Jesus? There's a, a scripture in Corinthians that says, First Corinthians, it says, it's not by persuasive words, but by power and demonstration of the Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. That doesn't mean laying on a hand. It doesn't mean praying for the sick. It means Paul was saying, I don't have to be fancy. Mm-hmm. The word, the, the, the journey of the cross, mm-hmm. my experience, my testimony is so powerful mm-hmm. that if I just speak it, It'll do its job. So if you speak the truth Mm -hmm. in the church, those who wish to listen, Mm -hmm. it will empower them to be blessed. It'll it'll rescue them. Those that choose not to listen, they may have to go on a journey. Mm -hmm. Because if you if you if you warn them, Mm -hmm. it's not going to do any good. What's happening is the fathers in the faith aren't talking about this. So then my generation is talking about it out of hurt and current trauma. What do you mean they're not talking? She explain that. Like the fathers in the faith are seeing things and being silent. And there, are, there are those who are speaking up about it and doing an amazing job. But they're seeing this, this twisting and manipulation and abuse in the church. And they're just saying, well, our job is just to stay focused. When, rather than teaching my generation, this is what you look out for. This is healthy. This is not healthy. I wish someone would have been like, hey, that's not even Bible. Mm-hmm. That's not even healthy. You're not yeah. supposed to be bowing down yeah. to a man. No, you're not. And that's the recognition of performers mm-hmm. is the danger of the church. Mm-hmm. The mus- musicians are at, a, at an all-time low. 
mm-hmm. in the church because they're looking for gigs. Mm-hmm. They're not looking to place the throne in the middle of the, of the platform and worship mm-hmm. the worship of the Lord. Right. So the same way is with anybody who ministers the gospel, you have to be dead to self, deny yourself, mm-hmm. pick up your cross, which is the word, mm-hmm. teach it and follow it, which means obey it. What you told me is, I, I think that's really hard for people, is I said, I don't know if there's any other places where the Lord moves like this. And you said, oh, there are. There are hundreds. And you even said, you said, I'm not even talking about my church. You said there are hundreds. They're just not filming it. It's actually about Jesus. Let me tell you something. The Lord is moving the least in the ch- in most of the time in the churches that are letting you think that they're being moved. Why is it that these churches that... I have I have friend a friend who has been sexually abused at a different church. I'm not talking about sexual abuse. I'm talking about mental and mm-hmm. spiritual abuse. I've experienced this the most terrible of twisting and spiritual abuse. But on Sunday, it's called like like dog whistle gaslighting, mm-hmm. where it's almost like the, no, like you're crying out, you're screaming, but gosh, you're being so loud. That's not happening. The Lord's moving there. Why does the Lord move in these places? It, ra- it rains on the okay. Because that's what people want to know because okay. then that makes my generation not want to know the Holy Spirit okay. because he's moving in the places that are so perverted. The the Lord, it says it rains on the just and the unjust. That means if, if you're going to get wet, you're going to be good or bad, you're going to get wet. Mm-hmm. And remember, God does not work on your works. Mm-hmm. He, he'll use a donkey, mm-hmm. to, Balaam's donkey, to get a point across. God is moving in the earth and he's moving not based on your goodness your ability he's he's moving because he has created a platform where he is going to speak Mm -hmm. through a person if that very person abuses that platform god's going to still move Mm -hmm. in a powerful way for the sake of the people but woe to the person Mm -hmm. who moved who, who, who used it for its own advantage. You see, woe to the person who causes my little one to fall. To completely under, understand the entire message, the entire thought process that you're getting to right now, which is people that are legitimately church hurt, are hurt by people. Right. Number one, they can't be silent. Mm-hmm. They have to talk about it because it's going to bottle up. The Bible says, cast your anxieties upon me. Right. Now watch what I'm saying here. In order to cast your anxieties upon the Lord, like I did with someone that you know, Mm -hmm. they brought me each point for hours Mm -hmm. that bothered them. Mm -hmm. They brought me scripture that was misinterpreted. Because you have to unwind the twisting scripture. You have to unwind it. But you must talk about it. I think a great, great podcast would be to find 20 questions of people that there are 20 different questions of what they have experienced, and then bring biblical truth to those 20 questions. That's what healed your friend, right. is in letting that biblical truth heal them right. and go, wait a minute, if the Lord said this mm-hmm. and they said this, mm-hmm. then I got to go with the, the Lord. There's your healing right there. Right. So if the Lord says mm-hmm. to you, you're going to lose your anointing, mm-hmm. or the reason you're blessed is because of the anointing of this ministry, mm-hmm. No. Yeah. There's nowhere scriptural to say that. Yeah. The anointing is upon an individual. He said, I bless you mm-hmm. according to what you have done. Right. If God is moving in a ministry, that does not mean that if somebody leaves that ministry, they're going to lose their anointing because their anointing belongs to them. Wherever they go, if it's unto the Lord, it will be blessed, right. as you have well seen. Right. Okay? Anytime somebody puts any kind of dictatorship fear Mm -hmm. upon you that this is going to happen to you if you leave me. Mm -hmm. First of all, we're not leaving you. You don't own anything. You are just a product. You're a vessel for the Lord to work through. And people... You're talking about those those leaders. I'm talking about anybody in that circumstance. There's nobody that is good. There's... God will use anybody Mm -hmm. you you don't have your first of all it's remember the gifts of the spirit Mm -hmm. you're hearing what that's saying Mm -hmm. the gift of the spirit it doesn't belong to you it's Mm -hmm. a gift Mm -hmm. peace 
is a gift. It's mm-hmm. given to you by God. My peace I leave you. My peace I give you. It's a gift. Mm-hmm. My joy in you, your joy complete. It's a gift. You can't attain it on your own. Right. You have faith, but you have a gift of faith. Right. It's like you have a measure of faith, which we all have the same, but then you have the gift of faith. Mm-hmm. You have the gift of healing. It never belongs to you. That's why he says, I will distribute it as I will it. Right. The people who have been through spiritual, mental, sexual abuse are so happy that it's over and have forgiven. They don't want to talk about it anymore. Mm -hmm. The people who are still in pain want to vindicate themselves by talking about it. But there has to be a point when there are some that can say, I've been through it. I love them. I've forgiven them. But we as a church need to talk about the right and the wrong ways of doing things to protect the next generation. Because what's happening is... I see so many churches across the board just twisting scripture, creating these, they're doing like these seminar conferences to teach people to do things the way they're doing things. And as being as as high up as you could possibly go in one of these twisted ministries, I, I love the church. I love, like we talked about in the last podcast, I love that there's 20 different ways that you could do it. I love the idea of humanity. I love that that pastor's not going to have a great day sometimes and his message might be a little off and then he gets up the next week and he's like, I'm so sorry about that. We're just human. And I feel like because I grew up with you being a pastor, I have such a side to me where when I was in it, I was like, they're just human. They didn't mean that. They didn't mean that. But there's a point when I'm watching people turn away from the Lord because after you get to a peak of this abuse, you just like burst. And these people are like running away and bursting and freaking out. And when I felt from the Lord that I felt today is I, I've i seen what I've seen and I've been where I've been and now there has to be people that can educate and talk about it and like you said, point to the cross. Why? Not because we hate these people, because we love Jesus so much. He deserves for his name and his church to be defined as holy and mm-hmm. not twisted is some people are like, well, we're just going to put our head down and, you know, we're not doing them. But there are people there who want to know the truth. That's why they go to these ministry schools. They're like, I want to know more. They're as mushy as their brains can possibly be saying, teach me, Lord. And there has to be pastors and ministers that say, you know what? Like you've seen what you've seen. I, I, I am willing to not bash a man who's doing this, but call out the movement that they're operating in. Someone who understand scripture different than you doesn't mean they're abusive no 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 right it, it's a it's, it's abusive when they condemn you when they control you with right it too. and and that's dangerous i feel like i i feel like i escaped like a, an abusive house and i met not all, our family no no abusive, abusive church house yes i'm giving a metaphor I feel like I escaped an abusive house and I met all these other people that were like, I also escaped that house. I escaped that house. And we're like, well, now we know. Now we're in the scripture and we see it. And I'm like, but what about all the other people in the house? Okay. How do they, how do they know what is right and wrong? It's, 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 okay. There's an old, there's an old saying about a, a little boy that was on the beach and there were thousands and thousands of starfish on the beach and he picked up the starfish and he was throwing them in the water. Mm-hmm. And a, a man came by and said, you can't save all these starfish. He said, I know, but I can save this one mm-hmm. and I can save this one. And so you can only handle the lot in which God doesn't want anybody to be a hero. That's what I say so many times. Right. I don't want to do this alone. There's no, and there's no church in your city that is going to save that city. Mm-hmm. There's never been that way. There, nobody owns that. I think it shocks people though, that people can use the name of truth out of context of truth. And that's what's really hard is it's, it's branding at its worst. Is it's we'll use the name of Jesus. Oh, oh, you want a scripture? We'll read it and explain to you he's all there is. Okay. But then it's it's used and behind the scenes it is messed up. Okay. That's Think what's, about that's how you have to know the Lord. Let's go back to the original the original sin. Mm-hmm. God spoke to Adam and he said to him, Don't eat from this tree. Mm-hmm. Anything you want, not this one. Eve wasn't here yet. Mm-hmm. Eve comes on the scene and Adam says, we can eat from anything, just not that. Mm-hmm. She's cool with it, mm-hmm. right? Then the serpent comes in with its sparkles. 
it's with its wisdom, with its infinite mm -hmm. um, persuasive dialogue, with its with its shiny, sparkly dialogue. It's special, yeah. And literally convinces Eve that it's okay mm -hmm. to eat. Mm -hmm. And at that point, she actually convinced Adam mm -hmm. to eat. Yeah. Right. Yeah. If a, if the serpent can convince the two people, one of which spoke directly to God, walked with the Lord, walked with the Lord. Yeah. What makes you think you can? Your your job is mm -hmm. to say, "Don't eat this apple." Mm -hmm. If they eat it, they eat it. Yeah. You can't worry about that. Right. And when they come, all you have to do is you have to practice this. Right. That's what we had to do. We had to wait. Just wait. And when that person comes, that's what love is. Mm -hmm. It means I don't have to like you, but I love you. Love is I don't care what you did to me. Mm -hmm. I don't care what what you what, what we've our differences. When you come, I'm gonna catch you with the word. I'm I, gonna pour that into you. I talked to our friend Rev in Indiana, and he said, as a pastor, because why I'm saying all this is because I feel like if people make it taboo where you look down on if you talk about these things because people do it wrong so many times. And that's one of the things me and John have talked about so much is like, I don't, I don't want to talk about these subjects because it's done wrong so much because it's done in so much offense. And Rev, who's like an older pastor in Indiana, he sat me down and he said, people are coming all the way to Indiana and talking to me about th these places that they've been through, places that I've been to. And he said they're, the way he summed it up was that they're operating like abuse victims, that they're just like shot out. They, they can't, like you've talked about this too. They can't make a decision. They don't know any goal for their life. They're so numbed out. It's like a, it's like spiritually abused, but they're acting like mm -hmm. abuse victims. And he said, um, to paraphrase that the Lord is so worthy. We have to a teach the truth. Mm -hmm. That is number one teach the defining pathway and say, this is the right way. But even like Jesus said, is this is where we don't sow seed. He, we sow the seed on this, on this ground, but this didn't bear fruit and this didn't bear fruit. And we have to be able to teach this next generation. This is who Jesus is. Mm -hmm. People may, Lord, Lord, did we not do all <clears throat> of this in your name? People may use his name. People may operate whatever. In, in multiple different streams and, and twist it. But we have to be able to teach the truth of Jesus and our love for him. But because we also, A, love God, love people, right? Mm -hmm. Because I love God is why I just want to talk about Jesus and I don't want to talk about this. Because I love people is why we have to be able to not be afraid of these conversations to teach the next generation, this is what is healthy this is what is not healthy. This right. is who Jesus truly is. I agree 100% with what you're saying. I really do. And I agree that it needs to be talk, talked about. I agree that we need to um, teach the truth in every area, mm -hmm. whether it's a one-on-one -on -one conversation, whether it's behind a pulpit, whether it's in a evangelistics or anything. Mm -hmm. But we have to do it and not be bitter about it. Mm -hmm. So when the bitterness comes out, take five minutes. Right. Relax. Bring back truth, which is the word. And then... I'd go at it at that angle, right. from that angle. You have experienced the challenges yourself. You've experienced them through your friends, through other people that you may not even know. What's the solution you'd like to see? What's the, what's the solution in the way you'd like to see it handled? So truth can be brought forth. I mean, I don't know everything. I don't. But the reason why I wanted to do it this way is because I don't want to be the only one talking about it because I don't want to... I'm not the only one talking about it, but I don't want to be considered a savior. I want this to open up a conversation that every pastor and church isn't afraid to talk about this and say, number one, we'll take these people in and heal them and teach them the true word of God. And we'll also restore these pastors back to who they were meant to be. I agree. And I feel like this to me is a conversation that's so taboo that the older generation is afraid to address that I want us to just start hitting head on because right now the unbelievers and believers are watching these things all come out so on the news. Take it in its proper context, take it scripturally based and just begin it. It has to start. And your job is not to worry about who find who starts who joins you. Right. It's like 
like find one starfish is enough. You know? One starfish is enough. When Jesus was getting twisted and they were doing what they were doing in the money changers in the temple, Jesus went in with a whip because he said, not in my father's house. You're not doing this here. And what I want is for pastors and everyone alike to say, not in my father's house. This is not what the temple was meant to look like. It's not about that man. The, if, if you notice, the Bible doesn't even call out their names, although it is okay to call out names in some circumstances. But we need to be able to stand up as a church because my friends and people that I love are ruling off the church because of what it's done. Okay, can we take this? Can we finish it back with the original thought, which was the Sound of Freedom, the movie? Mm-hmm. The pedophiles don't think they're doing anything wrong. In their mind, they're okay. Right. You can't they're, go they're after. They're loving. They're loving. Yeah, you can't right. go after ministry. Our ministers, right. because they think they're doing it right. right. You have to be. You have to protect those that are being hurt. Right. And the only way to do that is through proper text and in the truth of the scriptures. Mm-hmm. And it'll bring healing where you don't even see it happening. Right. So you feel like you feel like it's healthy to open up these conversations. I feel like I've had over a year of healing, over a year of accountability pastors and teachers around me that have said please talk about this for the sake of the people and that's why I was like when I felt like the Lord was like I've you've seen what you've seen I've put you where I've put you it's okay to talk about it for the sake of my people because I feel like the Lord is mourning for his people too to be healthy not only is it okay to talk about it you must talk about it but don't come at it at the angle of vengeance against the perpetrator it has to be it has to be out of love for the victim. Right. And don't worry, the perpetrator is between God and mm-hmm. them. The victim is who Jesus said, I came for the sick, not the well. Right. And if the people are making you sick, God will deal with those people. You're just here to help the sick get well. Yep. That's it. That's the answer. It's very simple. And what that does is it keeps the anxiety from you. Right. Cast your anxieties upon the Lord. Right. If he says they cast your anxieties upon the Lord, he surely doesn't mean you to take on anybody else's anxieties. Right. So the way you do that is you just bring truth to the circumstance. Mm-hmm. And when truth is when truth has had its word, mm-hmm. then you just walk away and yeah. let truth do its thing. Yeah. No, that's really good.